Okay. Welcome back to this uh, topic uh, on stereochemistry, namely the conformation analysis of cyclic molecules. Okay. We have seen that the cyclic molecules, the initial concept uh, about its conformation was given by uh, Bayer and he considered all these cyclic molecules uh, as planar molecules and based on that he proposed a theory which is called Bayer strain theory and as per his strain, this is strain means angle strain and this angle strain is highest for cyclopropane and then it decreases uh, to cyclobutane, it got decreased then cyclopentane almost has uh, very little uh, angle strain and then cyclohexane as per Bayer's uh, planar theory that it should again the starts uh, as you increase the number of carbons beyond cyclopentane. If you consider all the cycloalkanes as regular, regular polygon then the angle strain again starts to increase. Okay. Now, we have seen that this theory uh, became untenable because it was found from heat of combustion data uh, that cyclohexane is the most stable of all these cyclic compounds amongst all these cyclic compounds and bias strain theory could not explain the stability of cyclohexane and beyond. Okay. Up to cyclopentane strain theory uh, is perhaps applicable, however, still we have seen in cyclo pentane the molecule is not planar. The molecule although angle strain is very little, but still the molecule prefers to adopt a geometry which is not planar that is called Packard form. So, it, it exists in the Packard form, this is the cyclopentane I am showing it yesterday we have uh, discussed this, this cyclopentane exists in two types of conformations one is called the envelope another is called the half chair. Okay. In the envelope four carbon atoms I am showing these, these four carbon atoms are in a plane and one carbon is up. So, this is the flap of the envelope, okay. this is the envelope, this is the flap of the envelope and this carbon uh, is not very is not a fix that this is the carbon which has to be up, it just uh, it goes down and then the next carbon goes up, so becomes the flap of the or tip of the flap of the envelope and then it, it actually oscillates between all the carbon atoms. So, at a it, you cannot say that uh, this is the only carbon which is at the occupying the tip of the envelope, it is just fluctuating between all the or oscillating between all the carbon atoms in the cyclo pentane. This is the envelope conformation where all the four carbon atoms in the plane and there is another one which is called the half chair conformation half chair where three carbon atoms are in a plane these three carbon atoms and one carbon is above this plane and another carbon is below the plane. Okay. Now, if uh, in this conf two conformations again angle strain is very minimal it, it has minimal angle strain. So, also in the planar conformation, but it does not adopt planar conformations a question was um, discussed yesterday it does not adopt planar conformation because in the planar conformation there will be <coughs> what are called eclipsing interactions or you can say the torsional strain which is associated because if it is a planar molecule then all these hydrogens adjacent hydrogens will eclipse each other and in order to avoid that torsional strain the molecule adopts the Packard conformation. So, it is uh, it is all written here the energy difference between these two is very little the magnitude uh, is perhaps not known it is very little. So, it always uh, oscillates between the two and moreover the as in I said there is another oscillation going on that which carbon is up that uh, that is also not fixed all the carbons uh, can be up one after another here also which two carbon which two carbons are up and down that is also not fixed it is always oscillating between adjacent carbon atoms. Okay. So, this is what is called pseudo rotation this phenomena of uh, conformational flexibility where the carbon is going up and down that is what is called pseudo rotation. And I said uh, this happens because the torsional strain 
gets reduced as it adopts the Packard conformation. Then we started the cyclohexane. Okay. Now, in, in cyclohexane, we have seen that it was Sachse and Moore who gave the uh, first proposed that cyclohexane exists in two extreme conformations. One is called the chair conformation and the other is called the boat conformation and the name arises because of the geometry. So, it looks like a boat and this looks like a chair. Now, these are the two extremes uh, and amongst these two we will discuss the reasons later on. Uh, the chair conformation is more stable than the boat conformation. Okay. And we decided that first we inspect the chair conformation, then we will move on to the boat conformation and we will explain why this is unstable or why this is less stable than the chair conformation. So, for the time being, let us just concentrate on the chair conformation. Now, remember last time what I said that in the chair conformation, if we number this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, these are the carbon numbering of the carbons. So, in this case what happens? There are 3 carbon atoms C 1, C 3 and C 5, they occupy one plane and the other, the other carbon 3 carbon atoms namely C 4, C 6 and C 2, they occupy another plane. And the middle, these 2 planes are actually par parallel to each other and you can think of an average plane going through the which is in between these two planes. Okay. And then what we have identified is that there are because apart from these carbon carbon bonds every carbon has two other substituents. Okay. Every carbon has two other substituents. Now, how to draw these substituents? If the carbon is, is occupying the top positions, so these are the top positions and these are C 2, C 6 and C 4 occupying the bottom positions. Okay. And at the top carbon, the, if the carbon happens to be occupying a top position, then the sets of bonds that will be there at the carbon, one will be pointing upwards, vertically upwards if the chair is drawn in this fashion. So, the C 1, C 3 and C 5 we will have 3 bonds which will be vertically upwards and the other bonds at C 1, C 3 and C 5 will be parallel to the next adjacent carbon carbon bond. So, this is the next adjacent carbon carbon bond for this carbon and this bond will be parallel to this. And so, while drawing the, the bond here, so this bond should be parallel to this bond and at C 6 you have this is the way to write the other substituent. Okay. Uh, this will be parallel to the next adjacent I repeat next adjacent carbon carbon bond. Okay. So, the, uh, but C 6 we have not of course, identified yet the other bond. What I first said that consider the top carbons. So, there will be 3 vertical bonds which are pointing upwards and there will be other 3 bonds which will be parallel to the next adjacent carbon carbon bond. Regarding C 2, C 4 and C 6 because they are occupying the bottom of the chair. So, here they also have vertical bonds, but they will be pointing downwards. So, there will be a bond here, there will be a bond there, a vertical line and there will be a vertical line at C 2. So, C 2 going down, C 4 going down and C 6 going down and the other bonds will be again follow the same rule, they will be parallel to the next adjacent carbon carbon bond. So, this will be parallel to this, then C 6 will be parallel to this one and C 2 this will be parallel to this one. Okay. And in the chair another parallel system is there set of parallel systems and that is C 4, C 5 is parallel to C 1, C 2. We have discussed that yesterday, C 1, C 6 is parallel to C 3, C 4 and C 2, C 3 is parallel to C 5, C 6. Okay. So, this is the characteristics of the chair form. So, at each carbon there are 2 sets of bonds, 2 sets of substituents. 
if it is cyclohexane then these are all hydrogens. Let us concentrate on a particular carbon say C 1 where I could see that because C 1 was occupying the top of the chair. So, the vertical bond has gone upwards this is what is called axial hydrogen and this is what is called equatorial hydrogen axial. So, at each carbon you will have an axial bond and an equatorial bond or an axial substituent and an equatorial substituent. The definition of the axial substituent is uh, I told you yesterday the cyclohexane has a symmetry has many symmetry elements if it is plain cyclohexane. So, it has got a C 3 axis and it has got a C 3 axis because if this is the chair then if you rotate it remember this is the head of the chair this is the leg of the chair. So, if you rotate by 120 degree so this is the if you rotate by again I go back to the original this is the starting point. So, I rotate along this axis. So, this is the chair that I view now after 60 degree rotation this is 60 degree rotation because this carbon now occupies the position of the carbon little bit up, but at the same uh, vertical point. Okay. So, this goes there and the chair looks like now the chair is opposite the head is up and the leg is down on the right side. So, after 60 degree rotation you come to a chair which appears to be different where the head and the leg are interchanged. But if you now again give another rotation 6 of 60 degree then you see then the head has come back to the right side and the leg has come to the left side ok. That means, it after every 120 degree rotation it becomes the same. So, that is what is that means, it has got a C 3 axis ok. So, the C 3 axis is right going into the middle and perpendicular to the average plane of the ring. Axial bonds are parallel to this C 3 axis ok. So, axial bonds you see all these axial bonds they are parallel to the C 3 axis. So, the definition of axial bonds is not that they are vertical they are parallel to the axis the C 3 axis that a cyclohexane possesses ok. Now, interestingly when you rotate by 60 degree the head goes up and the leg just interchanges head and the uh, leg of the chair interchanges. So, if that is that be the case. So, what I am saying that if you rotate it by 60 degree then what happens the chair will look like this the chair will look like this. So, it is just looking like the mirror image of the earlier one. So, this was the head of the chair on the right side now this is the head of the chair on the left side this is the leg of the chair in this form on the left side and this is the leg of the chair on the right side. So, it looks like the mirror image now what was your axis of rotation the axis of rotation is this ok. Now, so that means it does not have a C 6 axis because it looks different ok. If you give another 60 degree rotation you get the original one. So, another 60 degree rotation so you come to your previous chair from the starting point again the head is to the right and the leg is to the left ok. So, this is now same as that. So, that what I said, but I in addition I want to point out that after 60 degree rotation if you now take a if you place a mirror and take a mirror image the mirror is placed perpendicular to the axis. So, what will happen now you draw the mirror image of this the mirror is like placed here. So, now it will look like this. So, this point is here and that point and that point is here ok. So, you have to maintain the object distance image distance. So, now you see the mirror image is now same as the original. So, what I am saying suppose this is the axis I rotate it by 60 degree place a mirror perpendicular to that axis and then get the mirror image and I see the mirror image is same as the original. So, what does it mean that means, the same axis is also can be called as a S 6 axis. So, this if it is cyclohexane then it possesses a C 3 it possesses 
S 6. Okay. So, you can also say that axial bonds are the bonds which are coaxial with either C 3 or you can say coaxial with S 6 axis. It has got if it is cyclohexane it has got a center of symmetry and inversion point also because this is these are the these are the points which match with each other. So, it has got an inversion point and it has got plane of course, three planes of symmetry and going through these planes of symmetry are going through this and this bifurcating uh, bifurcating I will I can show you in uh, in the model. So, this is the chair form chair form the plane of symmetry can be visualized best if you hold it in this fashion in this fashion not like the way we have drawn it in the board if you hold it this is the same molecule and if you bisect now from this C 1 and C 4 these are 1 4 positions if you bisect this you see this is the mirror image of that point and that becomes the mirror image of this point. So, it it has it 3 so, there will be three planes of symmetry one will go through this and that this if it is 1 then this is 4 if it is 2 then this is 6. So, it will go C 1 C 4 C 2 C 6 and C 3 uh, this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 C 3 C 6 and C 2 C 5 ok I can I can write it here. So, there are planes of symmetry again I have already put it as 1. So, the planes of symmetries are going through C 1 and C 4 vertically like this or C 3 and C 6 uh, or C 2 and C 5. So, there are three planes of symmetry three sigma planes one i is present and then S 6 and C 3. So, these are the symmetry elements that are that are present in the chair form of cyclohexane remember there is no substituent here because the moment you start putting substituent these things uh, these things start will get changed also the moment you put substituents ok. So, that is so we have identified this axial equatorial we know uh, which are um, how to define them and how to write them also we know that ok. Now, there are um, as I said some students find it difficult to write the chair form and I can give you a very simple way to draw the chair form and that is um, that was published in a journal which is called journal of chemical education a very good journal uh, regarding uh, to aid the teaching of chemistry. And according to that uh, journal somebody wrote that because students find it difficult to write to draw a chair correctly because I have seen students writing chair like all this deformed like this. So, this is not correct uh, it looks like a chair, but it is a deformed chair. So, uh, so, you have to maintain the law of parallel parallelism that means, this is parallel to this this is parallel to that and this bond is parallel to that, but sometimes you cannot they cannot write properly. So, how to make it very easy? So, in that journal of chemical education what they say that you take four points at equal distance ok. So, four points the distance between them are same and you take one point above the second one and one point below the third one and then you draw it you join all these you get a chair that was in the journal of chemical education that you draw these four lines. However, miss I, I modified a little bit it is it is better that you modify a little because here the problem is uh, I told you that this is also a beta bond because it is above it is above the plane containing the C 1 C 3 C 5. So, this is a beta bond and this is below that plane. So, that is an alpha bond because we know we have this alpha beta concept that a reference plane you have to take and if some bond is above that plane that is called beta and if it is below that plane that is called alpha. So, we have this beta and alpha if you draw the chair in this fashion the problem is the beta alpha will, will, will be very difficult because the axial bonds if you draw that the equatorial bonds are um, 
in some cases what will happen because this is now in the horizontal direction. So, the, the equatorial bond here is a problem because that almost lies in the plane that you are considering. So, I so it is better that uh, this is not a problem because this is now going away uh, this is parallel to this. So, this this will not create a problem the problem is created by these bonds because they are now placed horizontally. So, the equatorial bonds now it sometimes students get confused whether this is alpha or beta because it appears that it is lying in the average plane of the system. Okay. So, that is why you modify that mnemonic uh, way of writing a chair. The best way is to you take again the four points, but in a little inclined fashion, not in the horizontal fashion and then put one at the top and one at the bottom and now you join. and you get the chair. Okay. Then you bypass that problem. Now, you do not have that problem. The, uh, the beta and alpha can be very easily distinguished. Okay. So, it is up to you how to draw the chair, but I have given you a way to bypass if you face any problem, you can, you can adopt this system of drawing four points in a line, but little bit inclined not in a horizontal fashion and one point at the top one point at the bottom and then you just join them and you get the perfect chair. Okay. So, that might help because you are the beginner. So, that might help you in drawing the chair form. So, far so we have identified some of the features of the chair form. Now, another feature of the chair form is that one chair form can by rotation what you are saying that I can interchange the, the head and the leg of the chair by rotation, by just rotation around the axis. I am not rotating any bond, I am just moving the molecule as a whole. The other way you can change this is like the pseudo rotation I have told in cyclopropane, uh, cyclopentane, uh, this also has a pseudo rotation business that the one which is down that goes up and the one which was up that goes down. So, this is all, all the time happening in the chair, not all chairs have this property. Uh, if the substitution is there, then sometimes this movement is restricted, but in cyclohexane, this is what is happening that this goes down and that goes up, you get the you get one chair and the other one is that this goes up and that goes down. Okay. So, basically this is continuously happening and you see the relationship between these two chair forms that as you take it up and bring this down, your head of the chair is changed. Earlier the head of the chair was on the left side, now the head of the chair is on the right side. Now, this process is what is called flipping, flipping of the chair. So, the chair is flipped, the head becomes leg and the leg becomes head. So, there are two ways to do that I said one is if you rotate the molecule, you rotate the entire molecule and in this case you are not rotating the entire molecule, you are actually rotating these along these bonds, you are rotating the system. So, that is half of the operation and the second operation is you rotate the other two bonds and then you get the mirror image chair. This is what is called flipping of the chair. Okay. Now, in flipping this is a very important concept. Uh, and it is happening in the chair form. As I said, in some chair forms, it is restricted. There is a sign to indicate chair uh, this flipping. This is the sign for flipping, equilibrium sign, but then a semicircle on the top of the lines. And then, as you flip it, that means you bring this down, and you bring this C4 up. So what you get is a chair form which looks like this. Okay. Up to that point is simple. The next question is what happens to this H A H E? So, first you identify the carbon atoms. The best way is to put the numbers again. Now, C 1 was earlier up. Now, after inversion this is the C 1 and this is C 2. 
then C3, C4, C5, C6. Because this clockwise, you have numbered it in a clockwise fashion. So, that has to be maintained. So, this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that clockwise fashion is maintained. Then the question is that C1, uh, consider the C1 carbon. So, there are two substituents. Interestingly, earlier this was top of the chair. So, the axial bond was up, was vertically upwards. Now, this is the bottom of the chair. So, the axial bond will be now vertically down and the equatorial bond again follow the same parallel principle that the equatorial bond will be parallel to the next adjacent carbon carbon bond. Okay. So, this is parallel to this or this because they are mutually parallel. So, this what happens now question is suppose this is the, I put a star here okay, and I put a double star on this hydrogen. So, this is a star hydrogen this is double star hydrogen question is where are these hydrogens now. So, that this is the star hydrogen. So, that is now here and this is the hydrogen which is double star. Okay. The question is what is the big deal about it? There, the, there is a great change that has happened when you have flipped this molecule. The change is that the axial hydrogen now has become equatorial hydrogen and the equatorial hydrogen has become axial hydrogen. That is the change that has happened. So, axial becomes equatorial, equatorial becomes axial. What about the alpha beta nature of this? This is still beta because if you take the average plane, if you take the plane of the uh, plane containing C 1, C 3 and C 5, you see that H E is still H E. Now, this was the star carbon, it is still above that plane. So, this is still beta and this is still alpha that is below that reference plane. Okay. So, what is the what are the changes that in flipping what are the changes that happen or the changes that do not happen? What happens? Axial becomes equatorial, equatorial becomes axial, but beta remains beta and alpha remains alpha. Okay. So, that is that is what is important. Okay. Now, we started with the chair form because I told you that for the time being let us assume that chair form is the more stable of this of this two chair and the boat. Right? We have assumed that, but now we have to uh, see what is the why this is so. Now, if I again go back to the model for the time being, see what is again go back to what is flipping in flipping you take the leg of the chair up and the head of the chair down. Okay. So, when you do this flipping you you have noticed possibly is that that if you do the reverse of that earlier stage that when the flipping was half done, when the flipping was half done that means, I have taken the bottom carbon at the top, then what I end up is what is the boat form. So, it has to go the flipping process has gone through the boat form. So, you have to involve the boat form during flipping. So, this is the chair, we start suppose we start with this chair and then uh, we can show many things with this model. Uh, first of all, in flipping what happens? This goes up. Okay. It, it could be the reverse also, this goes down first, but they do not actually happen at the same time because there is a problem. If they happen at the same time, so you will go through at some point you will go through a system where all the 6 carbons are in the plane and which is not the stable form. The torsional strain will be very high. As I told you that when it is uh, when all the carbons are in a plane, then you see the torsional strain between the adjacent hydrogens. Okay. So, you, so, the system will prefer the less energetic pathway that means, less energy involved pathway. So, first take one up and then take the other down, okay. but you see while doing so. So, this is basically done in stages one goes up you get what is called the boat form and then you bring this down you get the flipped form of the chair. 
Okay. You see, uh, I told you I can show you now that the what happens to this axial equatorial bonds. This red one is now occupying an axial position and beta pointing upwards. Now, if you do the flipping concentrate on only on the, the red that I am uh, showing this red one. So, when you complete the flipping process you see now this has become equatorial, but it still remains beta. Okay. So, now what we have learned? We have learned the process of flipping and we have now involved that when this goes to that form you have to involve this form what is called the boat form. Okay. So, now we will inspect that why flipping is just not stopped at this point, why it again that this goes up that will give this form the boat form. It could have stopped there, but it, it does not stop there. This goes down and then get the mirror image here or what is the flipped form. So, basically uh, this requires energy and it does not stop here because this is this is less stable than the chair form. So, the flipping process does not stop at the boat form, the boat form is occupying a higher energy. So, in the next lecture we will discuss that why the there is energy difference between these two, why the chair form is more stable than the boat form. Okay, thank you.